Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. In this tutorial, we're going to start looking at subroutines in C++, uh, which are actually more usually known as functions. So a function is, is just uh, like a, a separate piece of code containing usually multiple lines, which you can um, invoke from, the, from wherever you like. So you can cause it to run wherever you like in your program. And that means you can reuse it and um, you can split up your program into logical kind of sections. And I've got a little program here that I'm going to add a function to. So what this program does is it displays a menu, that should be three actually, and uh, asks the user to enter their selection and then they, they enter one of these numbers, one, two, three or something else if they get it wrong. And then we just switch on the number and um, we just, we've got some dummy functionality here. We're just outputting some text depending on what number they enter. Um, so I'm going to add, I think, just one uh, function to this program just for the moment. And there's quite a lot to say about functions. Um, so I'm just going to kind of start gently here. Uh, one thing that I want to mention at the start is that uh, C++ is, is built on a language called C. It's, um, it's, it consists of basically extensions to the C language. And in C, you created your entire program using functions. So you split the whole thing up using functions. In C++, we split the, the, we split the program up using classes. And classes contain both data and functions. And we'll get onto that in due course. But I just want you to be aware for, aware for the moment that what we're looking at here is not the kind of um, final way of doing things. It's, um, it's a step on the way to creating methods. And methods are functions that are part of a class. And we're going to see that later on. Uh, nevertheless, it, it is still quite common to use some functions in the C++ program, even though a purist would say they should all belong to classes. But anyway, enough of that. Let's, let's get on and take a look at how this works. So um, one thing we could do here, uh, just, just to get us started, is we've got some code here that outputs a menu. And that is um, a prime candidate for putting in its own function. So let, let's create a function up here. I'm going to start by typing the keyword void. And we're going to see what void means later on. But for now, I'll just mention that it means we're not returning any data into the into the what we call the calling function, uh, which in this case is going to be main, and uh, that's that's probably not going to mean much to you at the moment, but we will look at it later on. So type void, and then we need a name for the function, and the name for functions should follow pretty much the same conventions as name names for variables. Let's call this show menu. So I'm capitalising the M there. Um, in order to just kind of differentiate between the two words. And I, I'm starting the function, in this case, with a lowercase letter as well, which is a pretty normal thing to do. Although you do see different conventions in C++, this is one of the most common. And again, you could use underscores if you want in here instead. But if you do that, uh, you should do it with your variables as well. So however you separate the words in your variables and functions, um, and whatever convention you adhere to, you should adhere to it consistently and don't mix them. Following that, we're going to have the same pattern that we've now seen multiple times. We're going to have uh, an open and close round bracket. And uh, in subsequent tutorials, we're going to see what you can put in those round brackets. And following that, an open and close curly bracket like this. And between the curly brackets, we can put code. So I'm going to just um, cut this menu from my main function and paste it into this show menu function and I'll just use the auto formatter to format it. So this defines a function, this is defining a block of code which we've labelled show menu and this block of code is, um, is performing these actions, it's performing these statements and we can now invoke this block of code from anywhere. We talk about calling the function. So this, this doesn't do anything in itself, this is um, stuff that we could do if we wanted to do. And to actually make this happen, we need to call the function. And to do that in main, where I previously had this code, I'm going to type 
show menu with round brackets and finish with a semicolon at the end there. So if we run this now, it's going to look, uh, it's going to behave exactly the same as the program did before. So I've got the menu now, it's been output with this code in here. And uh, we can now enter, enter a selection, let's say three, hit return, and it says quitting because we've invoked um, case three here. Uh, so here we're, we're defining a function, and here, um, or you could also say we're implementing the function, and here we're calling the function, we're actually making it run, we're actually making this code run. And notice that I've defined the function above main here. If I defined it below, we'd have the same problem that we've seen previously with variables. So if I, if I say this and then try to build it, project, build project, then we get an error here. It says show menu was not declared in this scope. And that's because um, the compiler reads these lines downwards. And when it gets to this point, it hasn't yet seen this. So um, it says you can't use that because I haven't seen it. And we're going to see um, ways that we can get around that because that's, that's quite inconvenient. But fortunately, um, there are things we can do that avoid us having to declare everything in order. But for the moment, um, I'm going to suggest that you take any program that you've written so far, any one at all, and try to put some code into a, into a function like this and then call it in your main function. Um, and, uh, and, and for the moment, I think that's, that's enough practice. I trying to think if there's anything else I want to say about functions at this point. We're going to see a, a lot more stuff that you can do with them and that you need to know about them. But I think this is a really good start. And uh, you can have multiple functions, certainly. And you can try that if you want, define multiple ones. Um, we could take all this code and split it off into its own function. In fact, let's just do that quickly before we close. Uh, so um, it's, it's hard to know what to call this because at the moment we can't split this out into a really elegant way. But um, let's, let's call it void process selection. Or we could call it pros um, get and process selection or something like that. I don't know. And let's, let's just cut all this, paste it in there, format it, uh, command shift F or control shift F on Windows and say process selection and save that and let's just run it and it should behave exactly as before if we've got this right. So we can enter a number like five and it says please set, select an item on the menu because the default case is now executing. So yeah, I remember the thing that I wanted to tell you, which is that um, in a C++ program, if, if it is built up of functions, which um, uh, usually it shouldn't be, but you see a lot that are, and, and certainly in a C program, the, the aim is to get your main function really simple so that you can just glance at it and see immediately what it's doing. So here it's it's a really small main function, which is good. And we can see that it's just showing the menu and then processing the selection from that menu. And that's kind of a, a good situation to keep your main really simple and make your main illustrate um, basically whatever's happening in your program so that you can pretty much see at a glance. So I'm gonna leave you, leave you with this. Try this out on any, any program you've written. Try to define at least one function. And uh, in the next tutorial, we're going to look at more stuff that you can do with functions. So join me again for that, and until next time, happy coding.